I'm Tim Rothman. I'm the thermal mechanical hardware architect. Uh, Hardeep Singh is the thermal mechanical manager in Solidime. Uh, we're going to start out talking about some of the uh, summary of the form factor, just to give some context around it. We're going to talk about what we do for thermal design optimization, and then uh, some of the things we do with our extended temperature feature. Uh, that will give some context around, you know, the overall benefits that we have with uh, extended temperature, and then Hardeep's going to explain some of the details about the um, thermal comparisons. Uh, which is, I think, the important data that we want to share with you today. Uh, traditionally, we have PC and workstation optimized or, you know, basically form factors that were designed for those pl uh, platforms and, and solutions. EDSFF is really, you know, our first, uh, you know, server data center uh, form factors. We work quite a bit on these, uh, including the short, the long, and then now the E3. Uh, we're focusing today on the short for E3. There isn't a lot of traction for the long, and, and there's also a lot of focus we're seeing today on the 1T. Uh, but we do share a little bit of data on all of the form factors, and we are sharing some of the U.2 in comparison to kind of give the context around the extended temperature feature. Thanks for all this. Um, so basically, in terms of thermal design optimization, we have many things that we're trying to optimize the enclosure, the component uh, placement, and then the component capability. Uh, within the component capability, we have many things that we're also trying to optimize, but the main thing that we're looking at today is extended temperature feature. This enables uh, up to 80 degrees C touch temperature uh, on, on, the, uh, on the system. So uh, the extended temperature feature is aligned to the new regulatory spec. Uh, the reg legacy of, eight, of 70 degrees C is basically, um, you know, an, an old requirement that uh, was not hazard-based. The new hazard-based one says, what is the likelihood of someone to actually injure themselves? It also takes advantage of the fact that we are talking about instructed or informed people that are operating the data center. It is configurable at the factory or it has been a unique configurable. So basically, you can reconfigure the, the uh, solution. It is aligned to OCP 2.0. To the right, you see um, essentially what is called the instructional safeguards. It's the logo. In addition to, we typically will have some sort of a indication that says, this is a hot surface, do not touch. Um, so OCP has the, the, the hotspot logo as part of the um, spec. It is transparent to platform policies. In other words, internally we are in, improving the capability, including the touch temperature, but then we're still normalizing the, the smart temperature to the same value, so it doesn't affect any of the um, uh, platform policies you have to set up. Next one. Uh, so the benefits of extended temp, it, it's very simple. Um, higher is better, so this is showing the, uh, the approach ambient temperature versus the volumetric flow rate in the platform. So if we can improve the ambient temperature, this means that we, we need less we can look at it from two, two angles. Either we're increasing the ambient temperature or we're requiring less airflow. And so the orange is showing the 70 degrees C traditional touch temp and then up to 80 degrees C is, is in the uh, blue. And on the left you're seeing with the 22 watt uh, U.2 drive that we're barely meeting what we call the OCP spec which is 35 degrees C and we believe that it's around um, 3 CFM per SSD on the platform for this form factor. Uh, when we enable this feature, we're able to um, improve that quite a bit. And then if we went to a 25 watt drive, which is part of the form factor envelope, even on the, um, the 15 millimeter, um, we would barely not meet the, um, you know, we barely not meet this 3 CFM and 35 degrees C OCP requirement with the 25 watt drive. So it is a big deal to have this feature. <clears throat> Hi, so uh, this is all about like when we were explaining um, what, what is the benefit of uh, extended touch limit. The CFM, you need really less CFM. You can operate the drive at higher um, cost or the higher um, ambient temperature, but this all drives down to basically the cost of operation. Um, we took a simple example, what is the fan operation cost if you compare two form factor at 80 degrees Celsius, 70 to 80 degrees Celsius touch limit, and you compare two form factors publishing going all the way to 25 watts, and uh, how does the SSD impedance and the fan curves are gonna 
impact on that. So uh, just now, like Tim has explained, for 70 to 80 C, when you go for a U.215 millimeter, you require 3.4 CFM to operate at 70 C and 2 CFM to operate at 80 C touch limit. But on the right side, in the plot here, it also shows what is the impedance of uh, uh, U.2 and E1S 15 millimeter. So if you look at the impedance curve, uh, these are the two circles shows um, what is the impedance or the CFM corresponds to a 70C and 80C. As you start increasing the platform CFM, the impedance keep going up, and basically what happens is your fans are gonna pull more and more power to operate. We did simple calculations using a PUE value of two for an air-cooled data center, coming up with CFM and pressure drop and then coming up with the efficiency of fan and everything. So we calculated some numbers, but these numbers are purely for the SSDs. Uh, to cool an SSD, how much fan power will extract and then coming up with the cost of those. Uh, and the cost of operation for one use system, uh, for one year of the SSD, it's gonna be, uh, if you have a 70 seat touch limit, it's gonna be almost $22 per U. However, if you go to ATC touch limit, you can barely reduce the cost all the way down to $4 per U. So extended touch limit on our um, uh, SSDs is not only gonna benefit like uh, eco-friendly, or it's also gonna benefit of the cost of operation that the fans have to run. So it's very beneficial from all the advantages. Uh, these are the numbers that we just wanted to share here as well. Okay. Uh, so next one, we are going to, uh, this is also a case study. Uh, we have so many form factors. There is a U.215 millimeter, then 11 different form factors are coming from EDSFF. Uh, then we took an example, which form factor should one select? Let's say uh, everyone is asking a question, should it be E1S? E1S in, comes in three different, four different flavors. E3S comes in so many different flavors. We took, we took an example of uh, uh, one U platform. Uh, taken that, let's say you can fit in 12 U.2 SSDs. Uh, 24 E1S and the numbers are here, uh, but how would you pick which form factor should go into what platform? And the answer to that is there is not one golden rule like, hey, this is the golden form factor that can go in any of the form, any of the uh, platforms. But you would have to look at the calculations of the thermals, um, electrical, as well as the storage or compute. All those calculation comes in. Um, so we took a pseudo fan curve analysis. Uh, basically, uh, you come with a pseudo fan curve that was presented a couple of years back in the um, OCP as well. Uh, pseudo fan curve is basically how much is the, uh, imagine the platform without the SSD, and it's like a fan and a chassis and airflow is going through it. Now you add the ch SSDs, you are adding some impedance. And impedance of each form factor is different. Um, Impedance of each form factor is different, and that's gonna cause a different airflow through the single U platform. So you combine impedance to the fan curve, very typical fan curve uh, problem. You come up with the intersection point. Those intersection points basically tells what is the operating point for a one U platform for different form factors. And that's come with this one. U.2 is the very high impedance. It's just that the pitch is 18 millimeter, 15 millimeter drive, uh, comes up with a very high impedance. So the lowest airflow through the uh, fan at 70% fan speed. We are going with an ISO fan comparison, fan speed comparison. However, E3S is a lower uh, impedance and cause it brings more airflow through the platform. And then E1S 15 millimeter is further, which is further lower uh, impedance because of the fins and the structure. Um, it brings further lower impedance. So it's more and more lower the impedance, higher is the f uh, airflow through the platform. Uh, picking up these numbers, um, we kind of made a matrix here. So this is all, you could see top three rows is E1S form factor, then E1L, U.2, E3S, we also varied the power, but for ISO fan speed comparison, which is not an ISO airflow, because ISO airflow is not a right assumption. ISO fan speed comparison, uh, if you think for the 70% fan speed, um, you come up with this complete, which tells you different form factor can operate at different ambient temperature because of their higher thermal capability and lower air impedance. Um, and the plot here shows uh, EDSFF brings a wide range of, 
Yeah, EDSFF has a very large variety of or large range of uh, airflow and CFM uh, compared to U.2 or other form factors. Um, in the end, uh, from the portfolio perspective, uh, we wanted to share that uh, um, EDSF Solodyne portfolio, we, op we offer all EDSFF in range. It starts with E1S and E3S, E1S in different form factors, different sizes. We also give the E1L. Uh, our drives are available. Please come to our booth and you can just actually see the physical samples also there. Um, then uh, call to actions, what we bring is the awareness with your regulatory engineers to bring that there is an extended touch temperature limit uh, that can be go and the, uh, uh, there is a new specification that is out that needs to be followed up so that we can take all advantage, at least in data center world, we can take advantage of that. Uh, we also offer thermal test vehicles so that you could plug into your platform and it collects the data of the temperature, pressure drop, and every um, uh, minute detail that we could predict which form factor best suits your platform based upon the fan curve, based upon the performance you need, thermal, as well as on the storage side. So we have the thermal test vehicle along with our thermal models as well, so that could support your system. It's better for system integration. Um, and. Uh, most of the drives right now is uh, uh, available on our website, so please go to the website. They're ready for sale here. With that said, if there are any questions, please ask. And keep in mind, we'll publish the data. It will be available. Um, also, we're available uh, throughout the rest of the afternoon um, in the lobby, so just find us. And our tech marketing people are always available as well. Thank you. Question. Question. Yes. Um, temperature is a very complicated thing, especially for a semiconductor non volatile storage device. There's temperature affects retention, affects um, MTTF. It um, also has impacts to performance, throttling, and everything else. Right. So the Basis and assumption here is is that we're going to now use the touch temperature as the gold parameter for this thing, which is kind of far from the NAND, honestly. Um, what is your recommendation when you when the BMC controller asks for the temperature or the platform itself says what temperature are you? Are you now advocating that we start having some sort of case touch temperature report out as opposed to reporting what the NAND temperature is? So uh, the, way the, uh, the way the composite smart work is it takes into account all of the temperatures in the system. And uh, as I mentioned, we said, um, you know, touch temperature for the, these form factors is typically the limiter. In cases where we have other components that are the limiter, we always protect those. But in general, we're protecting the entire system. Right now, the one that has been, um, you know, left open as the biggest uh, capability to improve has been the touch temperature. So that's what we've solved with this. And so since you can't put a temp sensor on the skin surface itself. Yeah, we, we do a, an internal an offset. extrapolation that you yeah. guys take on to that. Yeah. And, we characterize it, correct. And yes. the expectation then is, is that the reported composite temperature is touch protecting temperature that. unless there's some other reason why it's, we It's protecting it. all and it varies. Uh, sometimes it will, you know, be another component. Uh, for instance, if we don't get the full 10 degrees C, but it will protect up to 80 degrees C touch. So Good. everything's covered. That's a, I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, we got to get into.